We start this memorable day in the path of totality with NBC's Tom Costello at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and NBC's Priscilla Thompson in Dallas. So Priscilla, first to you, because you will be first, at least in the States, Dallas will be one of the first major U.S. cities to enter totality. The partial eclipse begins in just a little more than an hour. Describe the anticipation there. Yeah, Andrea, it is a party here. The music back there is getting louder. There are going to be about 7,000 people here at the Perot Museum. And I want to introduce you to one of the families. The Dorman family came all the way from New Jersey while the girls are on spring break. And so let me ask, first to you all, how are you all feeling about being here? Good? Excited, excited, definitely. Yeah, what are you most looking forward to? What do you think is going to be the best part? Just the seeing darkness. The darkness, when it yes. just goes dark in the middle of the afternoon. Yes. Awesome, awesome. And are you concerned at all about the weather? I know it's a little cloudier than we expected. No. I am confident. No, you're still going to have a good time. Yeah, they've yeah. been saying they don't know if it's going to be sunny or not. We're, we're confident. Awesome. All right, we love that energy. Well, good luck with everything today. And Andrea, there you have it. People are not letting the clouds here steal their sunshine. And I've got to tell you, it was quite a bit cloudier about an hour ago. The sun is starting to break through a little bit. So there may be some hope for us here that we get a pretty good view after all. And then, as you mentioned, those storms going to be rolling in after that moment of totality. Andrea? Thanks so much to Priscilla. Tom? As you know, we're getting ready already, even though we're not first up. Uh, but you're along the path. The sun goes through 11-year cycles. Right now, it's in its most active stage, yep. making this eclipse even more exciting for scientists and for viewers. Talk to us about that. I'm, I am so glad you asked me about this, because I totally geek out on the science. But I first want to give you the scene setter here. We're at the Indy Speed uh, way, right? This is where they run the 500. And they are going to be running some race cars uh, a, a little bit later. Just part of the whole excitement that's building here uh, at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. They expect 50,000 people in the stands. And we've got a lot of them already. They're on the other side of the bleachers. NASA is an official sponsor. We've got lectures from NASA astronauts, Purdue University. So the crowds are building. And can I just tell you, what a beautiful day. 68 degrees right now. We're going to 76. Blue skies should be perfect. Okay, so now I want to talk to you about what you asked. The 11-year cycle on the sun, right? It's a normal 11-year cycle. But as we go through peaks on that cycle, we have seen increased solar storm activity, magnetic field activity. And it kind of sends these surges, if you will, uh, these massive corona ejections towards the Earth. Here's where we care. We care because that impacts our power stations, our satellites, our cell phones, our comms on Earth. The, the louder that that becomes, the louder that that solar storm becomes, and the more ferocious, the more we're impacted. So that's why NASA astronauts and NASA scientists are so excited about today. When that eclipse occurs, they get a chance to see and, and really look into that corona to better understand these solar storms that impact Earth, but also go beyond Earth, right? And they travel at millions of miles per second. So this is an exciting opportunity, not just for all of us to witness something so special, but an incredible scientific opportunity. And NASA plans to exploit it completely. They're putting rockets up with experiments. They have a, a, a plane traveling at 50,000 feet to do also its own experiments. So there's an awful lot of hard science that they're hoping to glean from these moments of totality today. Should be really cool. Andrea, back to you. <laughs> well, you know, we're all catching the spirit here. Tom Costello, Priscilla Thompson, thanks so much. And we're going to go up to the roof a little bit later. Uh, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson joins me now from the Great Lakes Science Sciences Center in Cleveland, directly in the path of totality. It's pretty noisy out there, so I just want to find out from you about the science. We're all in awe of this. Talk to me about what you're hoping NASA is going to learn. Well, you mentioned the planes that are going up 50,000 feet. They're going to be able to study the eclipse about two minutes longer because they're going to be uh, going in the direction that the sun uh, and the moon are. And uh, we're also uh, sending instruments up to the ionosphere to find out this phenomenon of the sun's rays as it hits this uh, 
area of concentration of ions, which are uh, energized atoms. What is the phenomenon there that suddenly the fact that the Earth goes dark is there a new phenomenon? A uh, couple months later, we're sending the Parker Solar Probe. It's going to go, Andrea, close to the sun. It's got a heat shield that's going to uh, deflect all of that heat to save the instruments. We're going to learn more about that corona around the sun that we've never known before with the Parker Solar Probe. And how does learning more about the corona help us predict um, meteor explosions and other, you know, things that affect our satellites, our weather systems here on Earth? Well, just think about it. This is our star and everything revolves about our star. And our daily life uh, revolves about that star. And that star shoots off uh, nuclear explosions and all that radiation goes through space. We want to learn as much as we can about this star because we're going out there where we don't have the protection of Earth's magnetic field with all that radiation. And uh, we want to protect our astronauts. We want to protect them on the moon. We want to protect them when we send them to Mars. Speaking about our astronauts, I was hearing earlier on the Today program that when our astronauts do their spacewalks, they have a gold shield that covers their face, their eyes. Um, that they also have, you know, wraparound glasses at various times when they're in the space shuttle or, you know, in, in our rockets going up. Uh, t talk to us about the protections that they use and why we should be so careful here on Earth. Yeah, if we were to look at the sun directly, uh, it could damage our eyes. And that's why these special glasses, if you look through them in normal light, you just can't see anything. But they are protecting uh, the severity of that light from damaging our retinas. And so, again, it's a warning to everybody listening to this. Uh, please, if you're going to look up, even if it's a partial eclipse, uh, please wear those glasses. Uh, we don't want you to be damaged. Well, I've got mine right here, so I'm ready when we go up on the roof later this afternoon here to see the partial eclipse. But talk to us also about what, what average Americans, what citizens can do to participate in your research. Well, you know, so much of our space program is research. For example, on the International Space Station right now, uh, we are beginning to have major pharmaceutical breakthroughs using the zero G of space uh, in determining the molecular structure so that we can manipulate them and create new drugs to cure diseases here on Earth. Uh, you go to the moon, uh, think about it. When we went a half century ago, how did that affect Earth? We had to have highly reliable systems in a small volume that were very light in weight, Andrea. And that brought about the micro miniaturization revolution. And everything that we've seen spin off, a lot of it came out of the space program that we're the beneficiaries today. Now, Al Roker mentioned also that you might feel a drop in temperature and that wildlife, as well as our own pets, might react. What are we going to see in our dogs and our cats and our other pets? Well, we've seen in the past, you just think about it, all of a sudden, pure daylight suddenly turns to night. And that causes animals to be confused. So we've had reports that giraffes start galloping, that birds start singing, and crickets start chirping. So uh, you think about it, in the middle of the day, suddenly everything goes dark. That's unnatural. And uh, you'll observe that. Look at the animals when this occurs. Bill Nelson, you're amazing. 
former astronaut, senator, now head of NASA. We really appreciate everything about everything you're doing for all of us. Thank you. Enjoy the eclipse. Thanks, Andrew. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.